Hey, how's it going everyone? Thank you for clicking on the video. A very special video, I might add, because I'm gonna be talking about and showing videos and pictures of the birth of my daughter. A couple of things to note up front. Obviously this deviates from the gaming content that I normally post on the channel. However, I've been posting some personal things in the past couple of weeks, especially leading up to the birth of my daughter. And it is more reflective of what I feel like talking about at this point in my life. I mean, you can only play games for so many years and I love video games but having a gaming YouTube channel is about interpreting the stories that you can find or create within the games and you know I'm just I'm playing the games right now I don't know how many stories I'm finding I still get some clips here and there and YouTube's changed a lot too so this video right here that you're watching is for the people that have been around for a while and are interested in my family life or maybe you haven't been around for a while and you want to learn a little bit more about my family life. So I wouldn't expect regular updates about my family on this channel, but if you follow me on social media, if you're in my Discord, both linked in the description, my Twitter and my Discord, then you could get some more regular updates there. And if I wanted to make a separate channel for family vlogging, which I don't really have much of an interest in, but maybe some other type of YouTube channel that is a little more me and less about me and video games, then you would see that content there. So who knows what the future holds, but for right now, I wanted to make this video for you guys that really care uh, about what's going on in my life personally. Let's get into the story. As many of you know from videos that I've already uploaded to this channel, which I will link in the description in case you haven't seen them or want a refresher, my wife was scheduled to be induced into labor during her 37th week of pregnancy, the first week of April, due to a condition she had which would be harmful to our child if the child was in the womb for more than 38 weeks. So 37th week of labor, the first week of April, we got an induction appointment scheduled for Friday, wait, actually, what day was it? No, it was Thursday, April 4th. Time is, uh, it's a little all over the place for me right now, but it was Thursday, April 4th. We are sitting around at our house waiting all day for this phone call saying, come to the hospital and have a baby. Very weird co phone call to wait for. Kind of surreal. You, you just pick up the phone and, and it's like, hey, you want to come have a baby now? And it's like, well, I don't got anything else going on. And that's what we were doing. And finally, at 9 p.m., we sat down to watch a Netflix show because we figured they would be calling us really late at night or we didn't know what the deal was. We were gonna watch a Netflix show and we got a phone call saying, come to the hospital and have a baby. We are in the parking garage right now. It is 9.30 p.m. on April 4th, 2019. And we got a call from the hospital saying, hey, you should come into the hospital right now and have a baby. We're going to go get a room. You know, I'm gonna slip a 20 to the person at the desk, try to get the prize suite, at least a room with a window. And we are going to have a child could be four hours from now could be hopefully not much longer than 24 hours from now hopefully i want for my wife's sake for it to not be terrible let's go so we did end up getting a pretty sick room. I guess it was one of the two biggest rooms on that unit. And I should also note for informational purposes that I may not even come back to in this video, uh, my sister works in the labor and delivery unit in this hospital. And someone I went to high school with works in the labor and delivery unit in this hospital and she delivered our baby, spoiler alert. So that was an all around amazing experience. But a lot of this experience was waiting because Megan had to be induced into labor and we've been told it can take up to or beyond 24 hours. So. A lot of waiting was occurring while Megan was in pain and I was just sitting around trying to be helpful. So we've been in the hospital for about three hours now. Megan got an IV and we got some snacks, went over a bunch of stuff, and I am now about to work on some thank you notes for our baby shower, which recently happened. And I probably should have finished a little while ago. I'm a bit of a procrastinator, but... You know, it's 1.05 a.m. Might as well work on some thank you notes. I also have a book to read about baby sleep. I bought this myself. Uh, didn't start it yet, but the baby isn't here yet. Uh, Megan was doing great, by the way. They said she has a high pain tolerance, which is cool. It's like a superpower we didn't even know about because she's not in pain a lot. We don't do any backyard wrestling or anything like that. But that's awesome. So everything's been going good so far, just a whole lot of waiting. 
the initial labor treatment she had overnight is supposed to be really painful and she said it was more uncomfortable than anything and she had to ask for pain medication a couple of times just to get some shut eye during the night but neither of us really slept that much maybe a couple of hours and they took out that one thing that they were doing to try to start inducing labor in the early morning and that was nice because Megan got a break and we got to eat breakfast together. Got a breakfast sandwich, which looks decent. We're gonna start kicking things off with uh, medicine and hopefully getting the ball really rolling at noon. We've been here a little over 12 hours now. So, mostly just waiting. So we had a good breakfast together, and then in the afternoon, they started Megan on a drug called Pitocin, which really kicked things into high gear. It's this drug that kicks up the contractions for women and puts you pretty quickly on a path towards delivering your baby. Megan's chilling here on some labor-inducing drugs, getting real lit. Early afternoon, fun times in room two. Come to room two, you know how we do. So Megan's on this drug all afternoon. Her contractions are starting to kick up. She's becoming more dilated. It's starting to become really real. And then in the evening, the nurse frightened me with something she said as we, and this was not my friend I went to high school with because she was on the next shift, but the, the nurse right prior to the delivery gave me some information that really scared me. It is now 6 p.m. and Megan has received an epidural. They're going to break her water soon to advance labor. And I was in the room for Megan receiving an epidural. I was told right before it happened that two men have passed out at the sight of the needle very recently. And do I think I'm going to pass out as well because we can't send another man to the emergency room? And I said, no, but in a non-confident voice, like, no. And I didn't pass out. Also, Megan, more importantly, was way tougher and she didn't even care that she was getting an epidural. Epidural updates? Feels good. You don't, I mean, we really don't even do any recreational drugs, coffee, anything, so this is a real, real cocktail going on here. Yep, totally feeling the same. Same. My Chemical Romance fans right here. Two, two big Fallout Boy fans. Megan didn't even flinch. Again, she was a rock star throughout this whole process and the epidural was, again, not a big deal to her. I was in awe of how awesome and calm and cool and collected she was throughout this whole thing. After the anesthesiologist gives her the epidural, the nurse practitioner, well, no, I don't I don't remember the medical terms, the, the head nurse in charge, the HNIC, comes in and breaks Megan's water. Megan's about 5.5 centimeters dilated at this point when her water breaks. They come in and check her dilation a half hour later, and then she's 12 centimeters dilated. For those of you playing along at home that don't know too much about the labor and delivery process, you have to be 10 centimeters dilated to deliver a baby. So 12 is like, uh, let's get things moving. After they see that, they're like, everyone who doesn't want to be in the room for a baby coming here, get out of the room. They start moving and shuffling things around. This was right after a shift change in the hospital, so people are like putting their scrubs on and running in after they had just put the, hung up their coats or clocked in, whatever they do when they get there. And my high school friend comes back in, who's the nurse that was in charge of delivering the baby, not the head nurse in charge of the unit, but the, the nurse that was tending to Megan. And she's like, hey, nice to see you again. I guess we're having a baby now. And we did, you know, it just, it hit so fast. Uh, I didn't even have any time to react to it. I was nervous about how I would uh, act in that moment because it's such a, a a powerful and emotional, a moment where you need a lot of focus. I, I don't even have the words, but it, it's just a moment that I was uh, kind of terrified of because I, I wanted to be the best person I could be in that moment for my wife who was gonna go through uh, something painful and something difficult. It actually wasn't that difficult. It only took 15 minutes from when she started pushing to when our daughter was here, she only pushed through three contractions, with, which I guess is really rare for a first time pregnancy. People were talking about Megan like she had some type of superpower. I don't know if they were just gassing us up, but it was awesome. That's when the, one of the most amazing things that has ever happened to me in my life, if not the most amazing thing that has happened to me, happened and uh, something very terrifying happened. The idea that our daughter could need to go to the NICU shortly after being born was something 
that we were kind of mentally preparing ourselves for. But I know for me personally, I had put it in the back of my mind because there was so much that needed to happen in the lead up to the actual delivery. I hadn't thought about it so much. And then when she was born, she had some trouble breathing. She wasn't crying too much. They immediately rush over and they're giving her oxygen and it doesn't take uh, someone with too much intelligence to tell that this is not normal, what is happening. A lot of people rushing into the room and it's kind of frightening. Although I did feel like I knew what was about to happen. She was about to go to the NICU. Again, we have family that works in the labor and delivery unit and my nephew was unfortunately also in the NICU. He's fine and healthy now. Uh, but we had a semblance of an idea of what a problematic delivery uh, were to look like. And that's when I had to spring into super focused dad mode. The nurses let Megan kind of touch the baby briefly, but she didn't get to hold our daughter uh, immediately after she was born. And then I followed the nurses up to the NICU. They, you know, pushed her cart into the elevator and got her up there pretty quickly and put this tiny human who I am the father of down on the table and uh, you know, started putting a bunch of monitors on her and they, they told me to wash my hands if I'm going to be in this unit and do I want anything to tr drink? It's like, yes, I probably do. This is insane. And I'm, I'm at the same time simultaneously overjoyed and uh, terrified, which kind of melded into this. It was like I was in Zen mode. But not, I don't want that to sound happy, but I was just laser focused on what was happening. I've never been focused uh, on something before and, and kind of, it was like an out of body experience. I initially tried to make this video the week that my daughter was in the NICU because I had announced on Twitter and Discord that my daughter was born and there were some complications and she had to be in the NICU, but I was not able to finish it because we hadn't gotten to the happy ending yet. We were sitting at home waiting for her to get out of the hospital. There were some frustrating things. That, that happened in the NICU and just, I don't know, I don't want to reminisce on it too much, but there were progresses and step backs as I would assume there were with anyone, but every day it felt like she got much healthier. And that was good to always have some little nugget of progress to hold on to as we left. We were visiting her twice a day in the morning and night because we don't live too far away from the hospital. It wasn't like a large trek there. But we got to hold her after a while. She got her wires out and she was actually tugging her feeding tube and her IV out and her wires out trying to escape, which I think is a really good thing when a baby is doing that. In the NICU, it shows they want to get out of there and get all that stuff done with. But I guess to spoil the ending, which I told you it was going to be a happy ending, she eventually figured out uh, all of her oxygen issues. That Obviously, the, the doctors and the nurses, uh, the awesome staff at the hospital helped her. And she was able to come home this past Friday, the 12th. And I have been a dad with a young child at home for two days now. It's still a surreal feeling. I, I think it will set in over time as I have this amazing new reality where there's this person that is a part of myself and a part of my favorite person I've met on this earth, Megan. And we get to see her grow and all these milestones and you have some long nights where you don't sleep a lot, but you're just, I was trying to watch Netflix, but at, at 4 a.m. I'm just staring at this human because it is much more interesting to, to look at this person that is a part of me and see she has my hairline, but it, my hairline looks normal on girls because it's just a widow's peak. My sister has it and she has really cool hair. So I don't need to defend that, but she has Megan's curly hair and it, it's an indescribable experience that I am looking forward to continuing to experience for many, many years. Uh, on end with my daughter Sienna and hopefully more kids in the future. Also, for those of you who are interested in what my cat Finn has been up to since she got home, uh, Finn is terrified of her. I thought he was going to be all over her because he was all over Megan while she was pregnant. Like this is his baby and he would lie down on her stomach like he was going to hatch an egg, but he is terrified of the baby. He has been watching her from a minimum of 20 feet away as she exists in this living space that he thought he owned. So I'm looking forward to him getting used to her being here, but I appreciate you guys watching this video. I, again, don't normally share things this personal. I mean, I share stuff about my life, but obviously this is deeply personal. Some of the happiest moments of my life and some of the most terrifying moments of my life all within the past you know, 14 days. So it's it's been a good journey and a, a great life lesson with thus far a happy ending, having my daughter home. And yeah, I don't know. I appreciate you guys being here for however long you've been here and look forward to seeing you in the future.
Take care.